concert movement number one. The basic head bob. Ready, go. Brad Joe with you here on whoa. Yeah, I need a haircut. Brad Joe with you here on a uh, beautiful two. There are cars with their tops down. Also, why are you wearing shades indoors? Are you Corey Hart or something? All right, straight up one thirty. Thanks for uh, coming along, hanging out with uh, me on a Tuesday afternoon. The phone number is two four four zero zero seven seven. All uh, are welcome. Some are capable. Uh, you can email radiobradshaw at gmail.com and follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash radiobradshaw for almost uh, all of your Bradshaw needs. Um, let's go to the bradshawshow.com. It's got what you need right there, show archives, links to uh, the contact info. You got the hookup. Um, tonight is the, the State of the Union. Some interesting folks. Coming and interesting uh, things being bandied about. Uh, we'll talk about that. Um, unlike Chuck Grassley, when I talk about the debt and the deficit, I can actually, you know, provide evidence, novel concept. And uh, talk about Obama derangement syndrome. For, for whatever reason, well, I know exactly the reason, Fox News, talk radio, uh, there is a segment of our population that just loses the capacity for... Ra- uh, loses is the right word. Further exacerbates the, the lack uh, of rational thought. Uh, it's as if, you know, the, the, the front part uh, of the brain just, just shuts down. And everything reverts back to, you know, it's almost like a, like a primal fight or flight instinct. You know, we can joke and call them cavemen, but there may be something to this. Cave women, too. Uh, I'll explain. But I guess the, the big news here in Iowa is that uh, uh, wrestling has been dropped as an Olympic sport. Now, I don't know if you're, if you're like me, wrestling and the Olympics in general, uh, have all, it's all been downhill since they started wearing clothes to compete. And originally, you, I mean, literally, you're talking the, the original Olympics where, where all of this came from uh, was, a, was like two oiled up naked dudes uh, grappling. Uh, basically, what most professional wrestling fans close their eyes and imagine. You're telling me there's nothing homoerotic about professional wrestling? Uh, I, 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 as a baseball fan, and we've already been kicked out of the Olympics, uh, which is fine. I get the World Baseball Classic out of it. No, much, much better uh, competition there. I have a hard time, you know, uh, over this. And I don't know why. Is it just because of the weather? Like, why is wrestling uh, so big here in Iowa? And I, I get my, my last, you know, tenuous connection to the, uh, I mean, I guess it's a sport. I, I have no idea how they uh, score it. And you can blame this on Vince McMahon and the Saturday night main event in the, the 1980s and, and Hulk Hogan and saying your prayers and taking your vitamins. But, you know, I always thought, you know, you pin, count to three, hit someone with a, uh, a folding chair. And I thought that. I, I have no idea. I'll flip by, like, you know, public television during the state wrestling tournament. And it's just, I, I have no idea what's going on. So I, I, I say this. Uh, from an area of complete uh, ignorance. 
Uh, but I do know, you know, again, my, my, my tenuous connection uh, to the sport was simply high school friends uh, who wrestled. And I saw the various things they, uh, they did to make weight. Uh, and I don't know how much uh, things have been uh, cleaned up, but you know, you're talking about you know, a 14-year-old freshman in, in high school doing strange and unusual things to their body that doesn't all right, involve alone time or a really long shower. In this case, you're talking about you know, caloric intake and uh, you know, nutrition. That, uh, that can't be good. And I don't know how much they've cracked down, if any, uh, since then. Uh, but when you see, you know, 15 and 16-year-old kid, uh, I'm just not going to eat this week. Uh, and I was, you know, weigh in, I think, happened in the morning. And by that afternoon, it was drink a 12-pack of Mountain Dew and Eat all the uh, the ho hos and ding dongs and fruit pies you can get your hands on out of the vending machine. So it almost looked like a, like a Brinks truck convention. Uh, all the coinage being brought to the little vendo center there in the uh, the Valley High School study hall. It's like I, I know Iowa has you know from from Dan Gable to. Kale Sanderson to unitards. I I don't know what singlet, cauliflower ear. Uh, again, I, I admit very freely and openly I, I come from a uh, an area of ignorance when it comes to to wrestling. Uh, although I was a committed fan for a time to uh, glow. Remember Glow, the, the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, which is basically uh, an elaborate infomercial for some hair care product that, uh, or line of products that I don't remember the name of, so fail there. Uh, but who, who can forget the fabulous Moolah or Wendy Richter, who was such a big name in women's wrestling, she actually ended up on, on Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. So there. She was the, the Hulk Hogan. What they were doing at the time, but um, it seems kind of weird to get dropped in an Olympic sport. But I'm guessing it doesn't move tickets, and people don't tune into it. And I haven't checked like the Croatian ratings anytime recently. Maybe you know any of your uh, nice Baltic states or, or former uh, Soviet republics or anything like that. Maybe it, it maybe it does gangbusters uh, elsewhere, but. And in, in, in the time when TV, not so much ratings, because the Olympics, you know, while big, it's not so, some sort of ginormous, but uh, rights fees, what it is, and this is basically what you're paying for if you're NBC and you're dropping a huge chunk of change on the Olympics. Uh, you are getting new people to tune in that you can tell them about the wonderful shows like, I don't know, Animal Doctor you have coming up for at least two weeks this fall. I think Animal Doctor lasted... All of two weeks. Uh, it's a promotional vehicle. Uh, while it's certainly not hard to get Americans to watch TV, uh, it's hard to kind of expand outside the people who are already watching Two and a Half Men. Uh, that'd be the, uh, the mentally deficient, uh, comedic deficient, and uh, I believe the comatose. Uh, but it's all uh, these these big you know events like a Super Bowl or the Olympics. What you're paying for is all the new people who would never tune in uh, to Hawaii Five-0, who aren't interested in, in what your typical lineup is, and it gives you an opportunity to promote yourself. Your 37 brands of CSI or Law and Order or whatever uh, you're pimping this fall. So that that's what they're actually paying for. And if no one's tuning into the web stream, if no one's making sure to set that DVR because at 9.30, Greco-Roman wrestling highlights are coming up. Again, it has nothing to do with the athletic validity of the sport. Uh, that's not what the Olympics are about. Um, hasn't been for a long... I pretty much, you know, and this you know, goes back to the 1930s, like 36, Berlin. Uh, it's not about people running around the track or jumping or 
anything like that. Uh, it's, it's a promotional tool. So you can blame, I mean, in all honesty, we're not going Godwin here. You can blame Hitler uh, for the lack of uh, wrestling uh, at the Olympics. And uh, this will probably be the last time I ever discuss. Try not to be heartbroken. Probably the last time I discuss uh, wrestling in even quasi uh, serious terms. I, I do reserve the right occasionally to show up with a feather boa and uh, some sort of big boots and some sort of, you know, banana hammock speedo to prove a point or something. But as far as the actual, like, legitimate athletic activity uh, of wrestling, uh, that's about it. Uh, there is some good news while we're on the local front. And if you're a fan of the Iowa Beef Steakhouse, uh, it was set to close. Not really so much financial reasons, uh, just the owners wanted to, you know, go do something else, which I completely uh, understand. Although, as far as professions go, what do you do? Eh, I fire up grills and people cook meat around me. And there are no whole lot of jobs uh, where that is kind of like uh, the main uh, just if you're a tribal chief, I guess cannibal tribal chief. We're just going to quabble over menu items here. Uh, and that would be steak. I, I like the kill it and grill it places. I know it's no Flemings, but I don't consider that a flaw. Uh, but it turns out uh, due to overwhelming support from the community, from employees, it's it's going to stay open. So, luckily, uh, we're still going. And the Iowa Beef Steakhouse, if you've never been, you don't really need to have excellent grill master skills, although it helps. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's charcoal pits. The menu is that cooler over there. Go pick out the you know Flintstones car uh, flipping hunk of uh, meat uh, that you would like to throw on an open flame. P.S. Have all the garlic bread you want. It is a national treasure. Uh, I think I'm a big fan of uh, of joints like that. Although uh, Rubes is is closer, so that's usually uh, if I'm going for the the kill it and grill. Speaking of which, I have a family member who decided to make a bet on Mitt Romney, and I'm out a steak dinner. So maybe instead of uh, you know a night out at the Sizzler, maybe I have to take in the Iowa Beef Steakhouse since it's going to stay open. All right, and since Obama won that election handily, uh, he is delivering the State of the Union address tonight. Uh, and again, it'll be very interesting to see uh, what the president lays out. Uh, we're already getting some signs that, uh, at least for those of us who have been pulling our hair out at Democratic capitulation for the last four years, there might be something to pull out of this, although if you're Ted Nugent, you're probably not going to enjoy your night. Yes, uh, a congressman in Texas uh, invited uh, Ted uh, Wango Tango, statutory rapist um, uh, Nugent, yes, who once called me a blood brother. I don't think he knew what he was doing at the time. Uh, okay, maybe not just at that time, but neither here nor there. Uh, will be his his special guest. Uh, and it's nice, again, to do good things for, for endangered people. Remember, Ted Nugent said that he would either be dead uh, or in jail uh, by next November. Uh, now, the dead thing would be, uh, I assume, something that he would have to take care of himself. And uh, if you want to end up in jail for a long time, tonight would be a very good opportunity to do that. Not that we recommend it. Uh, I'm guessing... Uh, the same guy who went out of his way uh, to avoid actual armed conflict back in the 60s. Wasn't he the one who just, like, pooped his pants for a week uh, when his draft number was called? Yeah, you know, a tough guy. Uh, I'm guessing all hat, no Iowa beef steakhouse. But he did say that he will be dead in jail by, by November. So since he's working on borrowed time, it's nice to see someone we don't do enough for the mentally deficient in this country. So 
when you can reach out to a Ted Nugent. You know, I, you know, you kind of have the obligations here. Although, considering there was a Texas Republican that did it, um, maybe they can just smell their own. Uh, now, the good news is uh, tonight might be a great first step in breaking our, our national fever, and that is this, this debt deficit hysteria. Uh, in an era of again, unprecedented in, in our lifetime, in our parents' lifetimes, I mean, worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. Not selling it short. And that's not exaggerating. Uh, this backwards fixation with the debt uh, and the deficit when uh, you know we are intentionally hurting our ec our economy uh, look at what is happening uh, in Europe you know it's funny the the party that wants to mimic the mistakes of Europe is accusing the president of wanting to make us European Look at Britain in their triple dip recession. Look at Spain and what twenty five percent, give or take, unemployment rate. Again, Greece is its own special uh, case with a bonus side of fascism uh, thrown in there. But th th there's nowhere you can show me no examples of where austerity works. Where austerity. Uh, grows the economy. Now, I can show you examples of uh, where austerity can be used to touch uh, entitlement and earned benefit programs uh, that would normally be hands-off, uh, but you can't show me anywhere where austerity actually led to economic success. Uh, and as we move again deeper, into, you know, the morass, and now there's talk, you know, we're not going to reach full employment till the end of 2018, I believe, was the latest estimate. You know, we're intentionally kneecapping ourselves so that Republicans can score points. Period. End of sentence. Hopefully tonight uh, we begin to break that fever, and this is a, a piece in the Washington Post uh, from Lori Montgomery. Here's one thing you won't hear, talking about the State of the Union. An ambitious new plan to rein in the national debt. In recent weeks, the White House has pressed the message that if policymakers can agree on a strategy for replacing uh, across-the-board spending cuts, that would be the uh, remodeled fiscal cliff. Kind of wily Coyote style. We took the two, kind of moved them uh, a little bit. But if you replace the across-the-board spending cuts, set to it next month, Obama will pretty much have achieved what he called our ultimate goal of halting the rapid rise in government borrowing. Now, of course, that statement uh, will cause Republicans to lose what's left of their minds. Uh, the problem is uh, the evidence uh, is on our side. Uh, I can explain. These are links that I tweeted uh, earlier today if you want to check out. Uh, my Twitter feed, at Radio Bradshaw. Uh, Ezra Klein today in the Washington Post. Uh, posted the deficit chart that should embarrass deficit hawks. Uh, I don't know if hawks is necessarily a term. I prefer peacock. Uh, an actual deficit hawk all right, is someone who complained about the debt and the deficit uh, during Medicare Part D instead of, like Chuck Grassley, making it intentionally more expensive. An actual uh, deficit hawk uh, would have been speaking up when the economy was doing well, say 2005, 2006. Yes, it was artificially inflated, but it was still inflated. Instead, deficit peacocks like Chuck Grassley were getting federal money uh, to build rainforests in Iowa and seeing, you know, what we could get as far as uh, subsidies in the state. Um, 
but this deficit chart that should embarrass deficit hawks uh, shows that the federal budget deficit, not the debt, these are two separate things that Republicans love to confuse because their base is easily confused, uh, but the deficit itself is shrinking faster than any time since the, the post-World War II demobilization. You know, let, that, let that sink in. You know, the, the, the debt, I'm sorry, the deficit is sinking faster than any time since you know, Bob Feller was a young whippersnapper tearing up the American League. And the Cubs were fresh off a World Series appearance. That one should sink in. Um, now, of course, Republicans, faced with a fact that goes against their dogma, uh, will basically just plug their ears and go, la, 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 I can't hear you. Uh, before uh, my friends on the left, or how about m just my friends... On the plus side uh, of, uh, of the IQ curve. Uh, before we celebrate, uh, understand this. Uh, and this is an Investor's Business Daily. Here's a pretty important fact that virtually everyone in Washington seems oblivious to. The federal deficit has never fallen as fast as it's falling now without a coincident recession. There are costs to cutting spending. And we may be seeing this, considering uh, we saw in the fourth quarter the economy shrank. One-tenth of one percent. Uh, but it still shrank. By the way, the technical definition of recession is two quarters in a row uh, of shrinkage. My apologies to George Costanza. Most economists who aren't insane or trying to sell you survival seed banks agree that the cuts in federal spending was the main driver of the economic slowdown in the fourth quarter. Uh, in spite of uh, wages actually going up in the fourth quarter. Now, some of that was uh, bonuses being paid out to our best, brightest, but more importantly, uh, to our just most highly paid. But it's not like it was all bad economic news. The economy still shrank. Why? We spent less. Uh, we have a serious uh, demand problem in this country. Uh, that's what our economy is driven by, consumer demand. It's why the sacrifice after 9-11 we were asked to partake was going to the mall. Because that's what drives our economy. Now, Republicans like to talk about job creators, and I'm, I'm more than happy to. The problem is they label the wrong folks. Uh, business is not a job creator. Employers are not job creators. Jobs to a business manager, to a CEO, to a CFO, are an expense. Uh, something, again, to be minimized. Your salary is an expense. They're not in the job-creating business. They're in the profit-creating business. And uh, as I literally had to explain to Sean Hannity's face, and he, I'm still waiting for an answer, if I'm meeting my demand with 60% of my peak workforce, why should I hire one more person? Especially when it doesn't look like demand is about to ramp up anytime soon. You have businesses that are, are literally hoarding cash. Not just offshore. Uh, but sitting on cash reserves. Why? 
There's no more demand. You're not going to hire. You're not going to expand unless you're leaving money on the table, and right now you're not. We have a demand problem in this country. And it's not just the unemployed who conveniently uh, also spend a lot less. Uh, but in, in, in an era of high unemployment, it is a bit of a buyer's market. Wages are down, benefits are down, people are, are moving around uh, less. So people are saving their money, business is saving their money. Demand is down, the economy is shrinking. These things aren't rocket science. We need to increase demand. And for far too long, Democrats, you know, afraid of being labeled as you know DFHs, dirty bleeping hippies, have gone along with conventional wisdom, which is more than often not you know stupid. And you have you know hacks and and well hacks of various uh, varieties. Some, you have the openly disingenuous like Chuck Grassley. Uh, and again, others, what was the term um, Paul Krugman used? Uh, incestuous amplification. Don't worry, Kentucky, this has nothing to do with you. Uh, calls it hearsay economics. Uh, in this case, the Nobel Prize winning economist for the New York Times uh, talking about a response to Joe Scarborough. Yes, he is the uh, the talking head. Uh, probably the only man in America dumb enough to uh, try to place a bet with Nate Silver. McCrugan asks, you know, how do people like Scarborough, and certainly not just Morning Joe, but no shortage, you know, come by such misconceptions? So I've gradually come to the realization that most of the commentariat, like that term, doesn't do what, say, Martin Wolf or I do. Grub around and publish data, read reports, and all that. Instead, they rely on what they heard somebody say the facts are. Hearsay economics. Of course, they don't listen to any old bum on the street. They listen to people of repute, people in their circle. But the repute in question has nothing to do with tech, tech, uh, technical expertise. Hey, Admiral Mullen, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, is, 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 a, is a serious person. So if he says something on the subject, such as econo economics, it must be solid. And where do these reputable people get their information? Why, it's what they heard somebody in their circle say. Hearsay economics all the way down. Then it may seem to be harmed to believe that this sort of petty small group sociology uh, exerts a vast influence on actual policy and is actually responsible for millions of lost jobs. But the more I look at it, uh, the more that seems to be right. If we can break this debt deficit fever, if we can go on the offensive, and again, look at where Republican rule has got us. Look at where conservative ideology uh, has gotten us. If tax cuts actually improve the economy, George W. Bush would have shown his face at the inauguration. Although we learned... Apparently, he's spending some quality time painting himself in the bathtub. I'm not making this up. All right. He would show his face in public. He would be at the Republican National Convention. He would be on the stump uh, with future Republican candidates, and it's not going to happen. And not just because of the economic crash of 2008. But the lack of economic growth prior to that, even with the housing bubble,
deregulation. Right? It's supposed to be the, the, the cure for everything that ails us. Ah. All we need to do is deregulate. Like we deregulated Wall Street, and that worked out well for us. The Republican Party has nothing to offer us, so why are we following their lead? Other than being, again, that fear of being called a DFH. You're not a very serious person unless you understand that the debt and the deficit are our biggest problems. And they're problems, by the way, that we've basically uh, licked. Krugman also throws along a, a handy chart of federal government total expenditures. You know what? It basically flattens out in 2010. Yeah, this Kenyan socialist, Marxist, communist, most liberal anything ever, at least if you listen to Republicans, which I don't recommend. Uh, you know, he's, he's spending like mad. He, the evidence just simply doesn't back that up. Ask a Republican, you know, is the deficit bigger today than uh, during Obama's first year in office? No, it's smaller today. Is the size of government larger in this country or smaller than the day Barack Obama took office? It's smaller. What benefit have we reaped from these things? Please explain to me the economic benefit right, of fewer teachers. Please explain to me the, the benefit of cutting you know, funding for higher education. There isn't any. And as much as you may you know, wish it to be true or want it to, to actually happen or just uh, believe when Glenn Beck tells you, that this is reality. It's simply not the case. Oh, this is broken. All right, so we're just going to hit line one. Hi, who's this? Ron. What's going on, Ron? Can someone, is it even possible for someone to say that, look, folks, um, government will never be downsized. Spending will never really be reduced. Everyone's just lying. And but but hold on, government has you know shrunk. Spending is flat, which, as the nation grows, I I would call that uh, a decrease. And not to the extent the rhetoric would uh, would have you believe. I mean, I mean, I, I well, what I, rhetoric? I, the, the rhetoric, uh, the the conventional wisdom is that uh, spending is growing and. The deficit is getting larger. The conventional wisdom is that somehow that conservatives and Republicans are opposed to spending. That's the and that's wrong. Well, no, that I mean that's just a lie. Uh, you know, they love spending. They they, they, they they just want more spending to go to areas that they approve of and less spending uh, to poor people who don't vote for them. And, and it's the same difference with uh, with the size of government. They love big government. It's like their favorite thing. I was going to say, no if, one, no, there, if no Barack one, Obama just grew government at the exact same rate Ronald Reagan did, uh, we're not even going to put it on steroids like during the Bush era, either of them. If okay, you just grew government the, the same rate, we'd have 6% unemployment right now, seven six and a half percent Okay, but this is the stuff that makes people crazy because they think that there's really someone seriously in the political arena that's like really going to cut government to the point that anyone would notice or cut spending. And no, it's not going to happen. No, you call it weaponized uh, Keynesianism. It, uh, it, all, yeah. the, all the trickle downers, all the debt and deficiters, and I just use Chuck Grassley as an example just because he's such. Uh, a hack when it comes to to this, uh, he will you know hoot and holler about the debt and the deficit when a Democrat's in the White House. Uh, 
but then you try to downsize the Air National Guard in his state and, you know, sound the alarms, bring in the cat, all hell's breaking loose. Well, the, the, the other thing is that um, the people who cry spending is out of control, when you ask them what spending should be cut, they never really give you a real answer because no, they it, know. It, it should but, be, they all say waste, fraud, abuse, waste, fraud, abuse. That should be, uh, are you a Wheel of Fortune viewer? Dilute, yeah, I mean, but the, the R S T L N E. All right, uh, that should just though. Fine, we all agree that waste, fraud, abuse uh, should be taken care of. Now, give me, you know, what is it? Three, three consonants and a vowel. Give me actual uh, spending cuts you want to make, and they never do it. Uh, they because, never do because there aren't any. They actually want to put uh, their name on. Because uh, voters, well, they, they will lose votes. That's yeah, the bottom line. That's why, why do you think Steve King, for all his uh, bloviating uh, over spending, turned down a seat on the Appropriations Committee? Because then he'd actually have to put his name on things. He would actually have to do something. People you know might what, I, think that perhaps uh, his rhetoric and his actions uh, wouldn't match up. So best just avoid that situation. Uh, entirely, and give up the ability to actually do something instead of just yammer on about it. You notice that, uh, you know, for an example, uh, no one no one ever suggested, for example, to uh, American Legion guys or VFW guys, you know what might be a good idea? This would be more efficient. Let's close down the VA and give veterans vouchers, and then they can shop for health care on the free market. That would be a good one to talk about. Health stamps. Think that, Helps, yeah, health think, stamps is still the term I prefer. Right. It's like, I don't think that would get very far. That would kind of like, you see the crickets at your next uh, VFW convention for the politician that would suggest that. The bottom line is no matter what you want to cut, and it's not even a Democrat constituency. Most of the entitlements, I mean, they, they go to a Republican constituency as much as they go to anybody. No, yeah. Take it back, and I know it's old news at this point, but, you know, the, the whole 47% video and how, you know, initially Republicans were all like, yeah, you know, that Romney should run on that message. That's a winner because they're morons. Uh, and then it turns out that most of those 47%, you know, you look at the, the states with the highest percentage of those people, you're looking at such liberal bastions as Mississippi, Alabama, you know, Georgia, uh, these stalwart, you know, Republican states. I don't think it's a magic uh, coincidence that when you look at states that uh, are a net positive on tax revenue versus the takers, the, the tax positive states are almost uniformly blue and the takers yep. almost uniformly red. You yep. know, uh, yeah. And, you know, the Democrat, and I know why the Democratic Party does this, because they're, they're part of the same system as everyone else. But no one quite points out uh, where the Republicans and conservatives and libertarians have come together. Exactly where are their uh, John Galt bastions of prosperity? You know, I, you, just don't, you just don't hear much about Mississippi being the next uh, Silicon Valley or anything. You know, well, just, you know they, uh, they like to pimp out Texas. Again, the, the problem with that race to the bottom is uh, eventually you get there. Um, you know, you can steal jobs from Arkansas or like Branstead wants to, you know, try to steal jobs from Illinois. Uh, and on a, a local level, that can, that can have some uh, success, at least on the job numbers front. Now, there are other associated costs uh, with that. I mean, look at Texas schools or look at, you know, the percentage of Texans that are, you know, don't have health insurance. Um, but they're bringing in jobs. They might not bring bringing in much revenue, but they're bringing in jobs. Uh, well, the problem the, uh, is, you know, it's okay, then Arkansas, you know, needs to do something. Uh, and then Delaware needs to do something. It, it can work on a state level, but on a national level, not so much. Where are you going to steal the jobs from? You know, if you're just going to play music. Well, chairs. and then they're, they're, also, they're also trading on law. 
on uh, things that just aren't true. Like, um, you know why people move to California? I mean, yeah, there's jobs and economic opportunity because it's a nicer place to live than West yeah. Texas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's always – they're going to have the coast, at least until, you know, Tool is right and they fall into the bay. Uh, in which yeah. case, learn to swim. But – uh, and which get you know they get some nice beachfront uh, property in Utah. Then uh, at that point, maybe they, maybe Sally Ann Cavanaugh would actually you know that investment. I mean, I, I tell you right now, compare the Bay Area, California to uh, to Houston in July, and guess what? San Francisco wins so much, yeah, nice every place. time. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's uh, again yeah, the, the state level stuff though is is, is very different. Than the national, but yeah, the root of it is Republicans don't want to spend less; they just want to spend less on things that aren't their priorities. The problem is, most of those things that aren't their priorities uh, are very popular. Uh, this is why you know, they need a Barack Obama. Uh, they need a, a Bill Clinton. Uh, we saw what happened when George Bush and his merry men came out of the gates in 2005 talking about privatizing Social Security. It went nowhere. It, it died, you know, faster than Dick Cheney's original heart. Uh, it was shut down uh, faster than a Dick Cheney hunting partner. How many Dick Cheney jokes were, can I mention here? Probably at least half a dozen. Uh, probably you sound about like four, you don't like the guy. About four until I get, yeah, kind of uh, offensive, but... Uh, point being, they need a, a Democrat to do it. Uh, I just uh, wish, know. like, people would be smart. Maybe this is much, too much to ask. And the reason I'm on this, Jay, because this morning I was at my car dealer getting my uh, car service. I'm in the waiting room, and they got Fox News. And I never watch Fox News. But just like, you know what? Two minutes of Fox News, it really goes a long way. <laughs> Yeah. You, know, you know, and it's all about oh, spend the, so many Americans think that spending is out of control. And yeah, they're control. wrong. I mean, if you, if you look at the actual spending data; it's flat. You look at the deficit; it's down. Uh, you look at long-term deficit projections from the from the CBO. Um, and, and all and all I want to do is to walk into the midst of the crowd of lemmings who are watching this and go, if government spending is out of control, it's to subsidize your high fructose corn syrup rear end. Again, pork is only something that happens in someone else's district. Right. When it's your bridge to nowhere, it's an obviously necessary project uh, that will bring good jobs to, you know, insert congressional district name. Right uh, here, right. the the good news. Uh, I, I, thanks for the call, Ron. I got to take a break here. Uh, quick, the good news is, uh, looking at the ratings for Fox News and even for talk radio, uh, the two most virulent strains uh, of right wing dogma uh, is that they're both down. Uh, ratings and revenue wise. Uh, you know, I I say this as someone again, who grew up uh, putting tin foil on on antennas because I, I I love radio. I'm a radio geek and have been uh, for a long time. And even you know, as the the, the bastion of liberal radio uh, in Des Moines, I would still listen to the Becks and the Hannitys, even a little Limbaugh from time to time. Mostly just for the absolute bat crap crazy stuff. Savage. Uh, the one I can never listen to again, Levin, because his voice is terrible. He sounds like Master Shake having a conniption fit. Uh, but I've always uh, listened. Uh, the The quality is, you know, uh, ebbed and, and, and flowed. They really kind of ran out of gas the last couple of years of the Bush administration. Again, you can only defend you know, crap so much. Uh, but even I, you know, I I, I would be classified, in spite of my politics, you know, as a regular talk radio listener, I, I, I turned it off. And it's not because I disagree uh, with the, the stuff. It's not uh, because I just, I, I know it's wrong. Uh, it's just, it's not the fact that it's wrong or it's something that I disagree with, because I've always been able to listen to uh, in spite of that. 
Well, it was the same way I was able to make it as a talk radio host. And why well, I knew that even people who disagree with me, if I did a good and entertaining show, would tune in. Even if they tuned in just to hate me. Uh, the past couple months, really, uh, like it, more and more Americans, I've just turned it off. Because it's stupid. It's dumb. You know, the fake... Uh, you know, the, the level of, of, of fake uh, in the outrage, you know, is reaching, like, porn star breast level. Uh, it's not that it's wrong. It's not that I disagree with it. It's, it's, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I have an IQ over room temperature. This stuff is too stupid to listen to. And as they chase uh, an ever-shrinking base. They chase it down. Uh, Fox News ratings down. Talk rate. And my old station is a 1.4. Like, those are numbers I would have been worthy of being fired for. They've lost almost half the audience I have. It's a station-wide. Uh, I think Huckabee debuted like something like 14th. In the ratings, I mean, just uh, a nothing burger. And it's not sour grapes. I, I, I still have friends uh, that work there, uh, but people are turning it off. Uh, can say again, those were the main engines of disseminating right wing BS. We've, we've talked about the. Those kind of percolating. And how, you know, every day in the, the right wing blogosphere and the think tank talking points. You know, story after story. And the, the goal is to reach escape velocity, make it to the Drudge Report, make it on talk radio, and then Fox News picks you up. And if they talk about it enough, you can get into the New York Times, the Chicago Tribune, the Nightly News, and then you've won. That's the whole point of having this, you know, noise machine at your disposal. Uh, well, that machine has a few monkey wrenches in it. That's why I, I hope tonight, in the presence of God, Congress, and Ted Nugent, uh, the president takes this opportunity to, yeah, to, to, to break the debt deficit fever. Its big, biggest proponents are disingenuous hacks. It has done nothing but hurt our economy. It's cost jobs. You know, it hurts people. The debt and deficit hysteria hurts people. It doesn't just hurt people today. Uh, when you start laying off teachers, when you start lessening your investment in your next generation, when you, you know, cut higher education funds. Again, it, it, it's wrong to intentionally inflict damage on the economy now when so many people are hurt. But, I mean, again, how stupid short sighter you are to shortchange your future. But that's what we're doing. Because very serious people, in spite of all evidence to the contrary, know this to be true. Well, we have a man with a bully pulpit. And the same way he's able to, to change opinions on same-sex marriage. Again, look at the support for same-sex marriage after the president evolved. This is an opportunity for him to leave. Will he take it? All right, quick break. When we come back, uh, just real quick on, it, it really is all about Obama, even on the right. And glorious Juche uh, uh, revolution uh, has a particular glow today. Calm down. I'll explain when we come back. Here on the Bradshaw Show, the webcast one live. Thanks for watching. Back right after this.
Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. I'm Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you gonna say that to a client? No. <laughs> You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're gonna be listening. They're gonna wanna know what your challenges are. Then they're gonna come and give you options and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family. You know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed the day. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did was perfect. It was great. <laughs> Keep going, though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Breaker, breaker, what's your going over? Hey, everyone. It's time to start. Better late than never. 224 Welcome Bradshaw to with you here on a absolutely gorgeous Tuesday afternoon. Like there are Basic. cars with their tops down. It's weird. And I, I was in Target last night because I was out of uh, printer paper. Uh, jorts are on sale. Spring is almost here. Uh, and I believe today is the day when all pitchers and catchers have reported uh, league-wide. Right, right now there is baseball. All right, uh, a couple things uh, real quick. Last night, uh, word out of Pyongyang. Uh, North Korea uh, appears to have 
set off a, uh, another nuclear device. I think they're first since 2009, and they're first since, uh, I don't know what, it was like Dear Leader, and then blah, 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 and the, the third generation of North Korean uh, despot, Kim Jong-un, uh, is uh, his uh, first test. Uh, let me, again, let, let me translate uh, what happened uh, yesterday in North Korea. Uh, they said, give us food. When we cut uh, Korea in half, we, we didn't, again, put a whole lot of logistic thought because we had bigger issues to worry about uh, at the time. Uh, the North cannot feed itself. Uh, can't even really come close. So, while they do have uh, pretty substantial uh, mineral uh, assets, Maybe that's the petroleum of the 21st century. Uh, your rare earth uh, elements and the like. Uh, food, uh, not very big uh, with them. I mean, it's literally the the average South Korean versus North Korean. I think the average North Korean is like three inches shorter. I mean, that's all nutrition at work. Uh, pretty much solely kept up at this point after the fall of the, the Soviet Union uh, by China, who likes having a convenient uh, buffer there uh, between a whole heck of a lot of uh, American troops uh, and, you know, China. So they like having that, uh, that buffer there. Uh, but even China has publicly condemned uh, their test uh, last night. Again, no imminent threat. It's not like whatever they rigged up underground uh, last night uh, could fit, you know, on any sort of missile. Uh, but I understand, uh, North Korea neither has the desire, again, privately, maybe not publicly, uh, for any sort of armed conflict, uh, or really the ability. Um, they could certainly make it messy, but it's not something that they're looking for. Uh, they couldn't sustain it. Uh, they want a seat at the table. And uh, unfortunately, we've shown time and time again that you know, unless you have oil, uh, that's pretty much the only way uh, to get a seat at the table. And by the way, it doesn't go for everyone. Look at a country like uh, South Africa uh, that actually gave up their new program. Why? Um, they couldn't hit anything anyone cared about. I mean, I don't mean to be rude, but it's one thing to be, you know, smack dab uh, there in the middle between China, Japan, and South Korea versus... Give us what we want, or Swaziland gets it. Mm. Uh, wasn't, uh, you know, the, the, the risk-reward cost-benefit uh, was a bit uh, out of whack. So we'll see what comes of this. I'm guessing six-party talks. Uh, I say, I'd really, I, I would, I'd like to visit Pyongyang because it's so strange and odd. Uh, if you ever have some time to kill, uh, most of it, you know, most of them are on YouTube, but there are a handful of documentaries on, on North Korea and it's such just a weird, you know, carved out of time uh, little area. Uh, it's like visiting an alternative universe that doesn't involve everyone wearing goatees. Um, and if there was a way to, to visit without, you know, providing currency to, to despots and their prison camps, uh, I do. I mean, just like freaky stuff, empty highways. Uh, it's, it's a bit 
different uh, Vice magazine before they went completely to crap. Did a, a Vice guide to visiting North Korea. Uh, talks about you know how hard it was to even get in. And uh, you know you'd be traveling all day to a to a tourist site, and it's all guarded. You're you're not allowed to go anywhere by yourself. But you'll come upon, you know, this little, like, gift shop or uh, tea house. And there's a very friendly, you know, North Korean uh, gal working there. And you get the impression, like, uh, no one's been there in, in weeks. Like, you're the first, like, person she's seen. And she shows up there every day. Uh, because if you don't, you're going to go to a prison camp somewhere and probably die. And they're going to take your family, too. Just cover up any loose ends. It's a really freaky place. And if there was some way to do that without supporting uh, the North Korean government, I, was, I think it would be an amazing place to, to visit. All right, real quick, just Obama derangement syndrome, example number 6,429 in an ongoing series, in this case a Washington Post poll, uh, asking people about their, their beliefs, you know, what about a, a path to citizenship, an immigration reform, assault weapons ban, climate change, blah, blah, blah. And they would ask uh, two different ways. One involving Obama's name and one uh, without. Uh, when it comes to immigration reform, do you know that 60% of Republicans support a path to citizenship? Overall, 70% of Americans. Uh, here's the problem. When Republicans were asked an identical question about citizenship with Obama's name attached, uh, that support dropped from 60% to just 39 The, the only difference in policy is that it had Obama's name uh, attached to it, uh, and support drops like a rock. Uh, somewhere, uh, B.F. Skinner is, is very proud. Pavlov salutes. I mean, think about it. it one thing you know, to, to train a, a dog to salivate, but uh, to train a, a human being millions of them, to have such uh, an immediate uh, and predictable response uh, to, to one man. I, you you got to, again, evil geniuses are still geniuses. Uh, it's, again, this isn't just a, a happy accident of history. Uh, and it's why, if, again, we want to get anything done in this country. Again, we have real problems. And the, the sooner we can get past the fake ones, like debt deficit, debt deficit, debt deficit, fiscal cliff, uh, or stop making new ones, like at the post office, uh, the better off we'll all be. All right. Got a scoot. We'll reconvene tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. Log on to the website, bradshawshow.com, thebradshawshow.com for... Uh, contact info archives and all that. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Radio Bradshaw, or just drop me an email. Always curious what people think. Uh, Radio Bradshaw at gmail.com. We'll reconvene tomorrow, like I said, 1.30 here on Webcast 1 Live. Thanks for watching.